Welcome back, guys. So we're going to start talking about some examples over preferences over uh, over over. I'm sorry, preferences over lotteries. Okay. So here is one uh, preference relation, which is behaviorally very appealing. In fact, so it's uh, we call it preference for uniformity. Um, so the decision maker. Uh, prefers less dispersed lottery where dispersion is measured by this mathematical thing. It looks complicated, but it's not much. So it's basically summing up uh, a, a difference of terms where the difference is the probability of an outcome minus one over the number of outcomes in set Z. Uh, and then I square them. Um, so it's, um, you know, in a sense, sort of the... Uh, uh, a variance. Okay, so our guy uh, sort of wants to uh, split the risk over all alternatives. I mean, you know, alternative A, B, C. Uh, I don't want sort of a so concentrated uh, uh, lottery. Instead, sort of uniform. This is why it comes from like uniformity, sort of preferences for uniformity. It's like you know, the more dispersed it is, uh, the better it is. I mean. Uh, this may make sense if, for example, the outcomes are sort of equally same to you or very, very much the same for you. Uh, you just, um, uh, you, you don't want to put the risk or, you know, it's like, you know, not putting all the eggs into the same type of basket. You don't want to do that. You just want to uh, sort of uh, distribute the risk in a sense. Uh, or, so it, it, it makes perfect sense uh, uh, behaviorally. Um, but the thing is, this example and the, the, the one I'm going to talk about next are degenerate uh, preferences in the sense that they do not care about the outcomes. All right? they, they just look at the distribution uh, of the probability, but not the outcome. So let's, ha let's sort of give an example to understand what uh, they look like in a very simple environment. So let's suppose my set of outcomes are, you know, the one that I used in the previous example. So there are three outcomes, A, B, and C. And so I'm going to compare, you know, three lotteries. Uh, one uh, is that A and B can happen equally likely. C will not occur. And then the other, other lottery is like A is going to occur and B and C will never occur. And then R is like, well, you know, everything is equally likely. Okay. Um, so intuitively, right, the, the, the uh, 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 sort of uh, a more uniformly distributed uh, uh, a scenario is basically R. So R should be the least dispersed uh, lottery. And here Q is like a crazy concentrated on one outcome. And so this should be the one that has the highest uh, dispersion. And this is sort of in the middle. But let's see. All right. So this is a way to measure dis dispersion. There, there might be a bunch of different ways of doing it, but this is just one way. So what is the dispersion of this lottery um, according to this formula? Well, it says PZ minus 1 over Z, right? And sum them up. PZ minus 1 over Z. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, uh, squared, and then sum over z. Well, here, the number of alternatives in my outcome set z is 3. So this is 1 over 3 uh, for all of them. So all it matters is the probability of each outcome. Subtract one third, take the square, and add it up with the others. So here, the probability of a is 1 half minus 1 third square. What is the next Z? It's B. Its probability is one half, exactly the same, minus one third squared. Plus, what is the next Z and the final Z? C. Its probability is, however, zero minus one third, right, squared. So if you do the math, I already did, so I'm going to skip the uh, calculations. Uh, you're going to see that um, that was, um, I'm cheating, three over 18. Okay, next, one, zero, zero. So the dispersion here, it, this is one minus one third squared plus uh, the probability of next Z is zero, same as the third Z. So I'm gonna multiply it by two, uh, zero minus one third squared. All right, so if you do the math, this is like two third. So this is like four over nine. This is one third 
uh, this is 1 over 9 multiplied by 2, it's therefore 6 over 9. But just to be able to compare this, this is 12 divided by uh, 18. So this is significantly higher, uh, right? Yes, as, as we said. Uh, so because here the concentration is way too much on just one outcome. Here the dispersion should be the least uh, because it's like a uniform distribution. Uh, but let's calculate. So this is one third, the probability of Z, but all of them have the same PZ. So therefore I'm going to just multiply the, uh, by three. So one third minus uh, the one third uh, squared. So this is zero squared, which is zero so times three is zero. So the decision maker prefers the less dispersed lottery, remember? This is the less, least dispersed uh, lottery. This is the uh, highest dispersed lottery. So uh, if, if my decision maker has this preference relation, that means R uh, is at least as good as, in fact, strictly higher, strictly preferred to uh, P. Oops. And P is at least as good as uh, uh, um, Q. So Q is basically the least preferred and then the second best and then the third best. Okay. Um, okay. So in our next example, preference for greatest likelihood. Um, so please ignore uh, the, the next ones. Um, so uh, basically when you compare, let's say our decision maker, when he or she compares two lotteries, she says P is at least as good as Q if the highest probability outcome, the, the probability, uh, the highest probability in lottery P is higher than the highest probability in, in lottery Q. Uh, so once again, this preference relation ignores the outcomes, um, but it looks at the probabilities only. So uh, let's look at those four lotteries, right? P, Q, R, and T. So how do we rank those four, alter uh, four alternatives or lotteries with respect to this preference relation. Remember, he, he cares only about the highest probability. So here, the highest probability is 0.5, and it's either A or, you know, assuming that we have three outcomes, winning 1,000, winning 10, or, or zero. So it doesn't really matter whether outcome A is gonna occur or B is gonna occur, but you know, the highest probability attached to this, for this guy, is 0.5, okay. So he's going to see 0.5 when he looks at this probability. When he looks at this probability, he's going to also see 0.5. So therefore, he should be indifferent between these two lotteries, right? Because P is at least as good as Q, uh, but at the same time, Q is at least as good as P because their probabilities, the highest probabilities are the same. Well, here, however, he's going to see 0 0.99, all right? And here, he's going to see 0 0.98, okay? So therefore, if we sort of rank those lotteries for this guy, he's going to say, look, R is my first best because this is the highest uh, likelihood. Although the, uh, the outcome here is sort of not the worst, but, you know, almost the worst, you know, $10. Um, for example, the second, his second best is T. Um, so in fact, he's winning $1,000 with a great probability, but he's still prefers R over it. So as you see, I mean, when you ignore the values of the outcomes, uh, you may actually end up pretty, you know, um, weird uh, preferences. But again, this may make sense, especially if the outcomes are almost or equally likely for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Outcomes are, you know, one way or an another have similar values for you. Um, so then he says P and Q, all right? So I'm going to put them next to each other. It means they're indifferent too. But basically he can uh, sort of give me this listing, uh, ranking. R is the best, T is the second best, and so on. Okay? Um, so now I'm going to jump to another set of uh, preferences. Uh, uh, I have another one coming up after this. Um, and according to this preference relation, however, it's not just the probabilities. Uh, but we actually care about the values of the outcomes. Uh, so sort of unlike uh, the preference for greatest likelihood or uh, uniformity. So what is, so let's erase and clean up some space. Uh, it may confuse you. Uh, so what, what does this preference, how does it behave uh, if the decision maker has this sort of preference? So let's suppose the decision maker attaches some value to each outcome. 
All right, I mean, here it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, winning $1,000, so let me attach 1,000, uh, you know, and a unit is, is undefined, but you know, a 1,000 units. So V of A can be like 1,000, V of B can be 10, V of C can be zero, right? Or you can attach any other value you want, but the decision maker attaches some V value for each outcome, all right? Let's suppose it's this. And then he says, lottery P is at least as good as Q um, if the minimum, uh, so, so the minimum of this set, which is like uh, the lowest uh, value uh, of the outcome, uh, which is possible, all right? It shouldn't have a zero probability, should be greater than equal to this one. So basically, he looks at two probabilities, P and Q, he is comparing the worst case scenario. All right, so in the worst case scenario, what, what value I'm gonna get? And here, the worst case scenario, what I'm gonna get. So for example, uh, let's erase these. So for this guy, um, this is probability zero event, all right? So therefore, he's gonna look at these two cases. What is the V of Z? Well, so obviously, he's getting A and B. Um, and so the V, so it could be either 1000 or 10, but he's looking at the minimum, so it's going to be 10, right? So the value for this guy uh, for lottery P is basically 10. Uh, what about Q? Well, here all three events are possible. What is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is C, all right? And its value is zero. So when he looks at this lottery, he's going to say, okay, I will... In the worst case, I'm going to get zero here. In the worst case, I'm going to get 10 here. So it seems like, you know, getting this lottery is better than this. So this guy is, well, I mean, not formally speaking, but informally, like terribly risk averse. All right. He doesn't, he doesn't want uh, not winning anything. He wants to win something in a way. So when he looks at this, again, C is a zero probability event. He's, got, he's not going to look at it. Here, the probabilities are, doesn't matter, however. Again, he's looking at the minimum of the values. And because both A and B are positive probabilities, the minimum is 10. So he's going to see 10 when he looks at this. And again, he's going to look 10 when he looks at this. So therefore, if my decision maker has this type of preference relation, he's going to say, look, uh, the P, the R, and the T, I am all indifferent between these three. Okay, so therefore I write them next to each other, but I strongly prefer them uh, over Q because Q's value is zero. Okay, so this is how we rank those four specific lotteries for this guy, if this is his preference relation. Um, obviously, this is again a sort of a, you know, depending on the context, once again, uh, you know, all these preferences examples make sense, but in this very simple case, Obviously, it doesn't lead to a, a reasonable scenario. For example, here, T, you know, this is the highest lottery, I'm sorry, highest price you can win. And this lottery is giving the highest probability to that, you know, outcome. So, I mean, intuitively, T should be the best for, you know, any rational code and code decision maker. So this doesn't sound like code and code rational, but don't forget, rationality doesn't mean more is better. Rationality means uh, the choice behavior can be rationalized, all right? So we can rationalize all those uh, preference relations. Um, okay, so we are, I mean, my next example is uh, actually what we use in uh, economics most of the time is uh, what's called expected utility the, uh, 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 preferences, right? So I'm going to call it expected utility guy. So the, remember the first two example um, uh, was where the decision maker doesn't care about the outcome. The third example, uh, he cares about the outcome, the worst outcome, but he doesn't really care about the likelihood of the, these outcomes. So this guy, the expected utility guy, actually cares about not only the values, but also the probability. So he combines them. How so? Well, again, the decision maker has expected utility 
uh, type of preference means he attaches some value to each alternative, I'm sorry, to each outcome. All right. And then he says, well, look, the lottery P is at least as good as lottery Q, if and only if he calculates a utility, we call it expected utility of lottery P, which is in fact this, uh, sum over uh, outcomes, where I basically multiply probability of an outcome times the value of the outcome. So this is nothing but an expectation of a lottery. All right, so I do care about the lottery of outcome, I'm sorry, I, I do care about the probability of outcome Z, but I also care about the value of this Z. So I multiply them, and add them up. So I'm basically calculating and, and, and weighted average. All right, so this expectation. So the expectation of uh, lottery P should be greater than or equal to expectation of lottery Q, which is again, summation Z in Z, um, such that, uh, oops, Q of Z uh, times V of Z. All right, unfortunately I erased my examples, but uh, let's generate them again. So if, if my P is one half, one half, zero, for example, and if my V of Z is like, uh, 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 for example, V of thousand dollar is thousand, V of 10 is equal to 10. Let's suppose uh, V of zero is equal to zero. Uh, this, this expected utility preference guide doesn't say anything about where these V's are coming from, just some V. And then he plugs them into this utility function. So therefore, the, uh, uh, the utility of P is going to be, well, one half times V of uh, uh, 1000 plus one half, so the second prize, V of, which is 10, and then one half v of third prize, which is zero. So if you just plug these values, this is 1000 divided by two, it's 500. What's the unit? Once again, in utility word, uh, there's no uh, unit. Uh, it's not kilo, it's not pound, it's not, it's not miles. So uh, one half v of 10, which is uh, five, and this is zero. So it's a 505 units, whatever that is. Okay, so if you give me another lottery, I can calculate with exactly the same V. So here, it's important that um, the decision maker has fixed V, all right? Meaning, he does not change, that's important, he does not change his valuation for each outcome uh, for each different lottery. So he fixes uh, his Vs, all right, and then for each lottery, P, Q, R, S, T, whatever, he uses exactly the same Vs again and again. So for each lottery, the only thing that changes is the probabilities, but all the V values are the same, okay? So that's the, how the expected utility guy behaves. And um, in fact, what we will do next is sort of rationalize this uh, uh, expected utility. It's like when a decision maker may have a preference relation that actually can be represented by this uh, utility function. Is it possible? And if so, when? So this is what we're going to talk about next.